Welcome to the BSB Bookathon, very first session. <laughs> We're very Hello. excited to have you join us for these sessions. I am Carson Tate, and I'm here to moderate these fine folks in this panel, which is happy, happily, <laughs> I'm sorry. <You're> very happy. <laughs> it's happy. <laughs> It's uh, happily ever after or happy for now. Which do you prefer? And this is a romance panel. We've got a fine slate of romance authors. So I'm going to go around the room and have everyone introduce themselves. And I'm going to start with Aurora Ray. I always forget that we have to intro ourselves these days. <laughs> but literally sent panelists a reminder. You have to intro yourself because it's more fun that way. Um, and for fun. And you can do a dance if you like. <laughs> it can be interpretive. Um, I'm Aurora Ray. Um, I'm a college dean by day um, and I write romance the rest of the time. Um, hopefully my dog Oliver will not bark during the session, but if so, you get to see his furry face because that's how I get to distract him from whatever's crawling around the driveway. Um, my newest book, I almost forgot, is Toy Shop. Um, it is available exclusively through the Bull Shorts Books website now um, and is available everywhere uh, starting next Tuesday. Um, and I'm super excited to be here. We're excited to have you. You are also a foodie and a farmer. <laughs> that is true. My, yeah. my barn is getting a lot of work this weekend. So <laughs> I won't forget that next time. All right, next, Fiona Riley, tell us who you are. Uh, I am Fiona Riley, and I am in Boston, mostly, and I am um, a medical professional by day and sometimes professor, depending on the season. Um, I write contemporary lesbian romance. If you've not heard of me, I tend to have a higher heat quotient, so make sure you hydrate when you read. And my newest book is Bed Against Me, and that just came out in September. The Queen of Steam is what they call her. <laughs> Um, CJ Birch, tell us all about yourself. Hi, I'm CJ Birch. I live in Toronto. By day, I am a video editor and graphic artist. And then on the side, I write uh, a wide variety of genres. I have a lesbian space opera trilogy. I have a murder mystery. And my newest book, which is contemporary romance, is Just One Taste. It came out in September. Excellent. Yeah, I love, I'm going to get back to this whole genre thing with you. Um, so, Elle Spencer, tell us who you are. <laughs> well, I want to be the queen of something. I, mean, I don't know what it would be at this point, but think about that, Carson, okay? Um, want it. Yeah, so I am, I am Elle Spencer, and I have seven books out and um, writing romance full-time. And my latest one is called The Holiday Treatment. It will be out November 1st, and it's a fun holiday rom-com about two women who work in the television industry who are trying to get their first full-length lesbian um, Hallmark-ish uh, uh, movie made. So it's a fun one. Excellent. Looking forward to that. Oh, also, so I'm a foodie. Don't forget I'm a foodie. <laughs> Watch out. Just gotta Raise your hand if you're a foodie. <laughs> Okay, thank say, you. Say, like, come on, say, like, man, I, I don't really care about food. And <laughs> <laughs> then you must, leave, you, you must leave the room. Um, <laughs> if we run out of romance questions, we will talk about food, and we'll be here all night. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with the overarching question. Um, all of you have multiple titles, so where does the majority of your work fall in Happy For Now or Happily Ever After? or somewhere in between. And so let's start with you, Aurora. Um, I think for all of my novels, I'm, I'm sort of going for the happily ever after, and I hope that's conveyed, um, or the feeling that people leave with is this sort of, this, these couples are gonna kind of make it last. Um, although I'm really, I just um, started working on edits for a novella that I'm doing as part of a Butch Femme collection that's out next year. And I've decided that the three novellas I've written have a little bit more of the happy for now. Um, they're so much shorter and I think the arc is a little bit slower. So I think that's a fun, a fun place to dabble in happy for now. Yeah, I, I actually have on my sheet of paper novellas with a question mark. Because <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I jumped. <laughs> no, it, no, it's, it, that's great. So at least three of you. CJ, have you written a novella at all? 
No. You're thinking about writing one right now. <laughs> You could tell. But the other three of you have written novellas and collections. Um, and I, you know, I just want to kind of pigeonhole that idea about whether that's a different structure and make, gives you a different feel for what you're going for in terms of the ending. Um, Elle, why don't you tell us where your books fall on the spectrum? Let's talk about H-E-A. Uh -huh. Hey, Carson, you didn't leave me hanging. Yay! <laughs> um, so, yeah, mine are, I think mine are mostly happily ever after. Um, and I just love reading that, and I love writing it. Um, I'm actually not sure how I would write a happy for now, what that ending would look like. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to hear from the other authors about that. Have any of you kids written a happy happy for now? I think I have. Novel length. I that's yeah. I think so too. CJ, tell us, talk to us. Um, I I do like the happily ever after. I like reading it because I'm I, I like the happiness. Uh, but my murder mystery is definitely a, a kind of happy for now, uh, place. And uh, the first draft, interestingly enough, was not. And this is. The final draft is like a draft 11. So somewhere along that line, things shifted and it kind of has a happy for now with the potential for happily ever after. In my mind, it can be whatever the reader wants. And I like that idea. So just kind of leaving it where you're not, it's not all tied up in a marriage bow. I, so when I, like, I think for romance especially, I like a neat tidy bow. But if I'm reading like... Um, fiction or literary fiction i i don't i like some questions left up to the reader so well so you've written a mystery space opera and romance um yeah. and so it, the space opera has like a couple that's kind of going there's three books right and it's the trilogy yeah and so um does that make a difference when it's a series I think, so. well, for me, the book uh, touched on some really dark stuff, like humans are no longer on Earth, so I kind of wanted to give them dark. <laughs> yeah, a really happy ending so that people are like, okay, well, it works out for those two in the end, so it's all good. <laughs> but, it, but it arcs over the books. Yeah, so it's, um, there's definitely, it doesn't actually resolve itself until the third book, and there were some very upset readers about that, actually, so... So that kind of takes us to Fiona, because you've written both series. And have you, have you written a standalone? Yeah, you've written a standalone. You did. The, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking most recently of your cruise, cruise book, right? I, call yeah. it, I just name books by what I remember them as. The cruise book. <laughs> the sexy leg series is yours, right? Um, <laughs> the sexy leg lawyer series? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I have done series and standalone. I'm in the middle of a series now. Um, I'm definitely a happy ever after person. As a matter of fact, we were just talking about this last night. I have pretty much written an epilogue for every book, minus I think two. And you know, I caught heat on one of them because I didn't write an epilogue for it and people were looking for it. Um, but I do, I like to tie things up into a nice little bow. I'm not, um, I think the novella is probably the only one that's happy for now, but I think like Aurora said, it's a matter of how much time you have to kind of build the story and how realistic it can be. Um, but I've definitely seen some authors be able to, you know, get to a marriage of the happy, ever, like a short little novella too. I just, I haven't had that success yet. So Aurora, let's bounce off that, um, talking about series versus standalones, because you've got both um, as well. So does that make a difference? And, you know, you have a series where you have, you know, one book's focused on one couple, but then they kind of, they reappear. And so the relationship develops in the other books. Um, does that make a difference for you and how much you want to wrap up in the first book? Yeah, I don't, I mean, there, cause there are two different approaches to series, right? There, you can write a series where you sort of follow one couple over multiple books and it's kind of this grander romance arc. Um, and I tend to do kind of the, the other version, which is that each, each book in a series gets its own standalone couple and it's kind of shared world. Um, I, I think it gives you so much more room to explore what happily ever after looks like um, when you have a series where you get to revisit couples. And I think that's really fun. I think that's one of my favorite parts of series is that you get to see 
much more than you would in epilogue. You get to see people get married, potentially have kids. Um, although I find myself thinking about how can you write maybe less traditional happily ever afters? Um, and how can you use some shared world and some series to, to dabble in what that might look like? Because I think for a lot of us, married, monogamous, having children, buying the house isn't necessarily what, what even happily ever after looks like. So I haven't gone there yet, but I'm, I'm hoping to. So I guess I'll have to write a series so I can do that. <laughs> Get on it. Um, so Al, you've, you've, you've not written a series, but you do have couples that reappear. So, you know, does that, I, do you think about that ahead of time? And, you know, I well, don't I'm actually. not going to wrap everything up because they're going to come back and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't actually, I, I mean, I think I pretty much um, wrap up the book um, at the end, but I, I have made reference to the characters in future books. Uh, and, you know, of course they're still happy. <laughs> I should hope so. You wrote it. <laughs> Stay happy. Yep. So yeah. let's go in, let's do an unofficial, unscientific audience poll. Um, if you guys, all of you who are watching, if you'll just type in the chat epilogue, you know, yes or no, just type yes if you like epilogues and no if you hate them. Oh wow. Okay, it's mm -hmm. kind of okay. lit up. And so, <laughs> so to me, oh, I got to know, finally. Um, I, don't, I don't really care for writing epilogues, so. <laughs> but Georgia. I'm going to have to start. So, thanks, Georgia. Um, <laughs> all right, well, th this is great to hear. So now you're on the hot seat, you know. Do you write epilogues and... Um, you know, what do you save for the epilogue? And do you think readers read epilogues? And do you write them because you think readers expect them or just because you want to? So that's just a big bunch of questions. I'm going to toss all these out. And I'm going to start with you, CJ. Uh, so I've written epilogues for, I think, every book except my new contemporary romance. And someone did was upset that there was no epilogue because they wanted to see what happened. I was like, but I wrapped it up. It's done. And now you get to use your imagination to go wherever they're going to go. I, the other books, they needed it, I felt like, because especially the murder mystery, you needed a little bit of pick-me-up after that ending. So, yeah. How about you, Fiona? Talk to me about the epilogue. You said, you alluded to it earlier. You left one off and... I did. I left, you know, I left one off recently and um, I got a note from someone feeling like it was uh, that the story stopped. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of an epilogue for a lot of reasons. I like to check back in because I think, you know, the, the typical recipe for a romance is like, it's a meet cute, it's a relationship build, it's an angsty problem, it's probably a breakup. And then it's a, you know, a reunion usually that happens towards the end of the book, right? Like you take like 50% of the book to get them to like each other, then you smack them in the face and break them up and then you get them back together. Well, I really hate the idea of breaking them up with like 10% of the book left and not giving some sort of closure. Like, did they actually get over this? Was it just a quick rendezvous in the bed? And then they like, you know, decided this wasn't worth their time. You know, for me, I like an epilogue. And I think that if the story lends to one, I, I always put one in. The difference is most recent time is that it's the beginning of a series and kind of what Aurora was talking about and what you were talking about is I drag my characters through them. So if you read the Perfect Match series, you know, the book starts with Samantha the Matchmaker and then she meets her girlfriend and then you meet other characters along the way and then the second book belongs to the other characters and the third book belongs. So you get a catch up, you get them get engaged, you get them get married, you see that throughout the books. Um, in this particular instance that I didn't write an epilogue, it's because you immediately see them in the next book in the series. It starts right where the last one ended. So uh, you revisit them. This one I just finished two days ago does have an epilogue, so don't yell at me. <laughs> no one yell at Fiona. <laughs> Yelling at Fiona for literally giving away the secret to writing a romance in like <laughs> I, I do now, what I can. Now everybody's going to do it. Um, <laughs> Elle, how about you? All those questions I asked, you answered. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think maybe we found something that I could be the queen of because I <laughs> love oh, <I'm> epilogues. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Um, and in fact, uh, I actually added one to one of my books after it had gone to my editor. And, and I said to Barbara, and he's my editor, 
um, you know, I, I feel like this book needs an epilogue. And she was kind enough to let me add one. And, you know, if, if I end a book that doesn't, that feels like, hey, this could be a series or there could be a part two and I don't want to invest emotionally in that and time-wise, you know, an epilogue is a great way to fix that too. So, um, yeah, I love them. I love the, the happy ending and the, you know, the love story and the continuing happiness and all that. So I'm all about epilogues. So is your epilogue like another whole book? <laughs> <laughs> no. You love them so much. <laughs> I will say that most of my epilogues end up with sex. So, I mean, that's just oh, a hey. warning to new readers. <laughs> because you're revisiting them. Like, you want to make sure it's that your relationship is still hot after the book ends. So I would say that if you find an epilogue in my book, there's probably at least a quickie in it. So you should read them. And skip them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to just up the game. <laughs> Aurora, how much sex is in your epilogues? <laughs> you know, I think there's been sex in a couple, but uh, I don't, I tend to write like chapter long sex scenes. So maybe I'm just not good at the quickie the way Fiona is. <laughs> um, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I, I give you probably, like, I'm, I, it's, it's a skill. It is a mad skill. Um, I think epilogues, I mean, I think sex can be fun. I think it's also a fun way to sort of see the couple, but maybe something that they were like dreaming about or working towards, like coming to fruition. Um, I'm thinking about like the book I read that came out this spring. The last place um, she looked. <clears throat> the last place she looked. Yeah, the, the sort of the culmination or the decision of them sort of part of them getting back together is also the decision to like go into business together. And so then actually getting to see that play out is for me as satisfying as seeing that they're still happy and in love. Yeah, that that was a perfect epilogue that was totally necessary, you know, not, not necessary, but it was sad or satisfying, you know. Well, thank you. In a different kind of way, the sex satisfying. In yeah. a different kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'm satisfied by people going into business together. I have a low threshold. I'm going to try quickies now. We have our own I... kink, okay? It's okay, no, no judgment here. <laughs> Um, did, did I, did everyone get in on that one? <laughs> I lost track after Fiona talked about writing sex and epilogues, and now I feel like we're going to be able to write an epilogue again. <laughs> All right, so talk to me about your happily ever after since you all write them. Um, do they, how, how happy do they need to be? Do there's, does there need to be a grand gesture? Does there need to be, you know, like, I love you, I'm, you know, I mean... How, how is it go big or go home? Do you think about those things? I mean, I think it really depends on how badly they need, they break up or how the story goes. Um, I, you know, I go back to my match series because it was my first series. It was also my first set of books. Um, you know, in the third book, they had a pretty nasty breakup. It was pretty nasty. Like, I was like, I'm not even sure if I can get them back together and I wrote them. So one of the things that had to happen is there had to be a grand gesture to get that forgiveness point and try to get that trust back. So I think it really depends on who the characters are and what, they, what they're like. I mean, in the, in the most recent book I wrote, it wasn't about a grand gesture in Bed Against Me. It was a matter of really not giving the other person the benefit of the doubt and one person making a rash decision and, and then trying to figure out, you know, I didn't really look at it from your perspective. I was too hurt from my own perspective. And then I think it's just a matter of figuring like the storyline and what works. They didn't need a grand gesture. They needed a really good conversation. And sometimes I think that that's realistic. I mean, I've definitely had that happen in my life. Um, you know, I've never rented a fire truck and come through a window like and strike a match. But I, I mean, I would try <laughs> it, I guess, if I had to. There is um, no time. <laughs> you know, but I think it, I really think it's, it's character dependent because I think you need to see like what's missing, what they need. And then I think that's where the happy ever after comes from. Is it a really good, strong communication? Is there connection in reality there? Could you see them in a long term relationship like six months or a year with this business development or this project that they're working on together or you know, I've had a couple of books where the characters have been in relationships, but also working in the same place. And one of them ends their tenure at that job in order to maintain a relationship. It's a motor of kind of going back and looking at that and seeing like, is quitting what we need to have a relationship or do we need to do something wild to get a hot air balloon? I'm all about hot air balloons. So, CJ, how do you feel about hot air balloons? 
And you know, honestly, I I would love them if I've ever been in one, but I haven't. Uh, I don't like the grand gesture. I think it's a little for me. It's a little too. Um, okay. What's the word I'm looking for? For my characters, it's always too over the top. They would never do that. I like just simple, like, conversations. Because a lot of times when you have these situations that happen, it's miscommunication between the characters. So you need to have more heart-to-heart -heart and less, like, air balloons or fire trucks. So, Well, I don't know. Fire truck. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hot I, stuff. I mean that's very mm -hmm. realistic and I think a lot of people can relate to to just you know what you would expect in your life not a flash mm -hmm. mob necessarily but um but don't we all want a flash mob <laughs> DJ does not want a flash mob <laughs> do not be flash mobbing her <laughs> Aurora flash mob yes or no I think flash mobs make me a little like anxious. I'm especially like right now, like errands makes me anxious. <laughs> um, I might be biased given the state of the world right now. I um, it's funny because I think one of the big like rules of romance is that like they need this dark moment and and then a sort of the grand gesture to sort of make up for it. And yet I find I'm. I think part of it's being conflict avoidant and part of it is like, no, no, we're rational adults with feelings for each other. We're just going to talk it out. And you're not supposed to have them be able to just talk it out in like one conversation. Um, but I think for me, the heart of, of, of getting the happily ever after characters to be all in, like whatever that means for them. And that might be a conversation that might be a grand gesture. And I think depending on sort of what, what gave them the reason to think it wasn't going to work, whether someone stuck their foot in their mouth or made a really bad decision or like whatever it was. Um, I think that's one of the fun things about romance. You sort of know the formula, the way Fiona sort of pitched it, but you're, the whole idea is to tell a fresh story every time. So the fact that you get to play with um, what works for that couple and what convinces both of them that this is worth risking life, limb and heart for. I like, I like what you said about the dark moment because sometimes it's not as dark and you know i've i've found in that these times make me want to write less dark moments which is interesting you know so l fire truck yes or no <laughs> uh no on the fire truck no on the hot air balloons um my i know <laughs> no uh my my wife proposed to me on a beach and it was just us and a homeless man who was really happy for us, which was fun. <laughs> but yeah, that was perfect. Um, uh, so, as, you know, as far as grand gestures go in books, though, I think sometimes it can be a redemption for one of the characters um, if they need that redemption. So in that way, it's great. And um, like Aurora said, you know, everybody's happily ever after might look different. For me, um, it, it, it has been in several of my books, the, the marriage proposal. Um, because, and I think that comes from my own desire to have had that my whole life and not see myself ever getting it, um, you know, and then finally having it and being so happy and that day on that beach being a great day for me, so. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's so sweet. <laughs> So before we move to the next topic, let's do an unofficial poll again. Grand gesture, yes or no? Some people have already kind of commented on this. Here we go. We got, we're, we're getting kind Ooh. of a Ooh, mixed bag, mixed bag here. here, which is, is awesome. Yeah. And I think it does. It's very story dependent too and character dependent. CJ's leaving because she doesn't like grand gestures. <laughs> CJ's drinking something good. Yeah. Well, of course it's after it's six, right? Yeah, it's after yeah. <laughs> Everybody pour a drink. Um, so along these lines, um, since everybody's commenting, this is great. Thanks, y'all, for participating. Do, um, to the authors, do reviews or reader feedback play a role in how you craft anything about your romance? I mean, yeah, I'll go. Um, I think yes to some degree for sure. I think um, one of the comments that did pop up that I noticed was that I actually do have a happy for now story. It's room service. Um, 
And that book takes you right to the end of the book, but the reconciliation comes within the last few pages. Uh, and that was a very different book for me in that it was a workplace romance that the workplace changed. So it wasn't all like, you know, we work in the same office building. This was actually a site-based romance that took place in three or four different cities. Um, in regards to that, I think um, it's a little different for sure. And I think the way that you, you go through the processes is a little different. Um, I'm trying to remember why I started that conversation. What did you just ask? It <laughs> <laughs> was. Uh, do, do readers read? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. No. I, yeah, so I do. I do. I definitely, um, I definitely listen to immediate reader feedback. If you reach out to me, um, I got a lot of feedback on room service about how people felt that the romance was something that they they'd experienced because a lot of people have sexual tension at work and maybe they don't have a chance to, to jump on it or not. And I think a lot of people were kind of talking like Elle was talking that they found someone and they were unexpected and they weren't expecting to have these like big romantic arcs in their life and then they found them through a professional atmosphere. Um, I did find, when if I get immediate reader feedback like that, if you send me a note or a message, I definitely listen to it. I think um, I have to write the story that I feel needs to be told, but I didn't forget about not writing an epilogue and getting chastised for it. Like I won't forget that anytime soon. Um, <laughs> and I think, I think it's, I think in certain degrees it's important to, to make sure that your readership gets the message across that you like you got to them what you wanted to so for sure i think feedback's important I, it does definitely weigh in some regards the background um but i think maybe more for the next book like i think i, I use it for information building and for you know making sure and establishing that i meet what people are looking for in the next novel dj how about you i i definitely so the first month i'll go on goodreads and sort of go through see how it's being received and then I literally never go back but I will pick up um tips I have like I got hit my first book that got released was a short book and people were really upset it was so short so I I took that to heart um there there was my newest book there is uh someone a couple of people have mentioned some bi erasure which was not my intention my fiance is bi like it's dedicated to a bi woman that was not what i wanted to do but i've taken that to heart and i can see reading back over certain parts where they might have misconstrued that i didn't want people to get that impression because for me the character of lauren was like she didn't know this about herself. So this is something she discovers, but I can now look back on my language and what I used and in not other books, like obviously I can't change this book, but in future books, I can take that and, and work with it and run with it. So. That's, that's a really great point. Elle, how about you? Uh, reviews and readers, reader feedback inform you. <laughs> to, to an, ex to an extent. Um, I, you know, I have to write what is going to be interesting and satisfying to me. And, but also keep in mind that, you know, I, I do want to sell books. Um, the, the greatest feedback that, that I've gotten as far as my ruins go is, um, you know, it's someone saying this gives me hope for myself. This, you know, this makes me feel like I can find that that kind of love and that kind of romance. And so, the, you know, the negative stuff, I, I don't read reviews. My wife reads them for me and she only gives me the constructive criticism. Uh, so <laughs> so I'm, I probably look at that less. It can be a bit of a minefield that Goodreads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Aurora, take us home with this topic. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And I'm actually kind of glad that Fiona asked you to repeat the question because she started talking. I'm like, oh, crap, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> off on a tangent. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think I actually really love constructive criticism. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so does Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody parked at the end of my driveway and he is not happy about it. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I think reader feedback that like, I, I take a lot of it to heart and I think if it's someone who's like really thought about it and how I could make a story better, I, 
I'm definitely a sucker for that. I think some of the first reviews I got in my early books um, very much categorized me in the sort of like low angst kind of fluffy romance. My my second book got a, a review in Publishers Weekly and they called it frothy. And I really like bristled at that at first. And then I'm like, no, I am frothy. Awesome. <laughs> <Good. laughs> um, and sort of like, it, it's it's what I like to read. It's sort of what I crave and sort of like folding that into sort of my brand and my voice. Um, I think those are the kinds of things that can help um, not just make you a better writer, but sort of like clarify who your, your sort of primary audience is. Um, and I think that that can be really fun. And I really value when readers take the time to, to tell you what worked and what didn't, but kindly. Um, the kind part is is very nice. I call it mean reads for a reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just a reminder to um, all you folks, um, please, uh, if you have any questions, type them in the Q&A box. One question, CJ, what is a space opera? And are you going to sing? Is Oh, God, you don't want me to sing. So uh -huh. space opera has nothing to do with singing. It's it's the definition is basically uh, when interstellar space is involved, when you travel from planets and there's aliens. And so Star Wars is a space opera. So it's this grand sort of space adventure. Love me a space opera. With lesbian. So that makes it better. <laughs> like you can't, can't go it makes wrong. Makes everything there. better. <laughs> so um, one true love or many, many true loves? Aurora, I'm going to start with you just because doesn't your book, your upcoming Twice Shy, have a an X? Yeah, actually, um, in I've written um, divorced characters before, but in this, this is the first time I've written two characters who are divorced. They're both um, like 50. Um, one of them has grown kids, um, and I think. It's, it's funny because I love writing happily ever afters and I love to believe in them, but I think as a, as a human navigating the world right now, I'm kind of embracing happy for now as a lifestyle, <laughs> um, which is maybe way more information than anybody needed to know. <laughs> I, whether it's in, yeah, I mean, I think, I think one of the things I like in, even in the context of a romance is that you can have had prior loves and sometimes they end really traumatically and sometimes they don't. Sometimes relationships just end and that that's not, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in soulmates and I don't write characters who could only ever possibly find a satisfying life with each other. Um, I, I think there is grand love and lifetime love, but um, it's not quite as singular and monolithic as that. DJ, you want to take that one? You you just said fiance, so you're. Um, yeah. Well, I. This isn't meant to be. I'm sorry. This isn't meant to be a personal. Question. On the spot. <laughs> on the spot. How are you? Sorry, I totally went there. I'm not. No, it's okay I'm, that you did. I. <laughs> I so I believe. Um, I, I like I'm a child of, of divorce, so I always believe that in your life, you're going to meet people and they're going to be good for certain parts of your life. Do, would I want to do, I think I've met someone who is going to be my forever. Yes. I like to believe in that. I have to believe in that because it's just who I am. Um, I guess, um, I don't want to say hopeless romantic because that's not the right term because then you're hopeless, right? So hopeful <laughs> romantic, is that better? Yeah. Um, so I, I believe that you can be the right person who you can grow with. And I think of like, you know, the movie Up, those characters, like that makes me cry every time because you watch mm -hmm. them and it's just like, that's what I want. Yeah, definitely. Fiona, Hi, Blue's you to your house and float away. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um, you know, I think, it, I think it sort of depends too. I think right now is a hard time. Like I think we, you kind of touched upon and Aurora touched upon, um, writing romance right now is tricky. I think it's hard to find a lot of enthusiasm for positivity in such a hard world. It's very isolating. Um, I'm a natural extrovert. So for me, it's challenging in a different way. Um, so I think, 
Yeah, I think writing happy ever afters right now, um, there's something wonderful and escapism about it and cathartic, but I also think it's tricky for sure. Um, I don't think that you have to have a one true love in this world. I think um, you can kind of like what CJ said, I think people come and go from your life in a way that's important to develop who you are and, and, and for your own story. Um, you know, in every book I think I've written, it's been like a kind of a second chance. Like you're an older, you're an older established person figuring out like you're not a teenager. This isn't your first love. The exception maybe being my book, Not Since You. That's the first book where I've gone back to a past relationship. So in that book, they were high school loves. And then when they went to college, they broke up. One was traveling abroad and one was not. They had different um, backgrounds and one was affluent and the other one was just a worker and her family couldn't afford to do the things the other one could and for 10 years they were apart and the book starts with the more affluent character supposed to be on her honeymoon and right before the wedding um her fiance cheated on her so she couldn't get her money back on the honeymoon and she was like well i already paid for it so I may as well go so that's 10 years later so now they're 29 or 30 where they left off as like you know teenagers and it's a completely different approach because now you're an adult, you've had sexual or, or intimate relationships with other people, and you kind of draw back to that. And it's, that's a way for you to kind of experience something different. And in that, she talked about, you know, how much she loved the woman she was going to marry. So clearly, you know, although she felt like her high school girlfriend was the person for her, it didn't work out. And I think that there are lots of people that that can happen for. Um, for sure. I think I have a, the next book I have actually is going to be an age gap and this woman will have been divorced and she'll have me a younger woman. It's going to be a matter of figuring out, I mean, you're kind of young and also I've been married before. So like, what am I looking for? It's not, I've had that walk down the aisle. I've had those experiences. It's going to be something different this time around. Elle, you want to tackle this? So you, you've had a second chance and at least one, right? And yeah. And so, um, How's that? So many loves, yes. Soulmates, yes. One true love, yes. One night stand that changes your life forever, yes. I mean, I, I just want to embrace all of it. And I want, I want to write all of it because I think it's all valid. And, you know, if any of us can find that kind of love in our life, we're so lucky to have it and want that for everybody. And, and want to um, have something that people can read and, and, and you know, get joy for a few hours. And, and so yes to all of it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. So, um, well, let's just do a fun question. What's your favorite romance trope? And I'll give you a moment and I will call on Aurora Ray. Right. In the meantime, why doesn't the <laughs> audience, why doesn't the audience um, type in your favorite romance trope? You know, rich girl, poor girl, second chance romance, age gap. Let's hear it. Um, yeah, we're, I, look at we're the just yelling at us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. It's such a great question, and I I just feel very commitment phobic about it. Um, <laughs> Commitment well, phobic could be it's a trope, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just finished writing a second chance. I high school sweethearts like Fiona, who who sort of a decade later bump into each other. I'm kind of that right now. Um, I I think they're all. Del I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of do an L. I'm a pan trope. <laughs> I love all the <laughs> CJ, how about you? Um, <laughs> I seem to write uh, the uh, boss and subordinate uh, trope the most. So I guess I'm going to go with that because I really, and I really enjoy reading it. I, I enjoy writing it. It's a very popular trope. Yeah. Very much so. Elle, what's your trope? I love all the tropes, but I will narrow it down love to all. two. <laughs> okay. Two. Um, one. I, Enemies to lovers and workplace. I just love those romances. They're awesome. Yeah, workplace. Very yeah. popular. Yeah. Yeah. If so, uh, if I had to pick one, I'd, I'd actually pick the same. I think uh, the book I just finished writing, Bet Against Me, is an enemies to lovers and a workplace. They're rival um, realtors. And I think for me, um, that was really fun to write because there was so much 
general tension that I think the sexual tension was easier to write because they absolutely hate each other. And I've gotten a lot of feedback about that in this book. Um, I like catty, sassy women. I think that someone who's confident and possessive of themselves and, you know, not afraid to speak their mind is incredibly sexy and interesting. So um, the enemies to lovers thing, I think, is awesome. And I think if they're working against each other, that's even better. So um, for those of you on Facebook Live who can't see the chat roll, my favorite trope that's been mentioned so far is secret baby goat. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried that one yet. <laughs> I'm writing all it. dibs. <laughs> Romance. It's gonna happen. Oh, you guys are fun. Um, all right, so let's see here. Um, let's see if we have any questions. And I'm going to say, what's your favorite thing about writing romance, and why? And um. Let's go to Aurora Ray first. And you, okay, should so probably, I just, you should probably hold that dog for Oliver for all Zoom meetings from now on. Right. He um he definitely ups my leg. He's just so cute. Actor. <laughs> <laughs> it's your he's cozy not happy, right? So that it's he's like a toddler. Um as much as I said the sort of like I don't necessarily subscribe to the singular sort of soulmate. I, I love love and I love happily ever afters and I love hopeful, warm, fuzzy things. I don't, I don't like dramatic, overly dramatic movies. I, they just sort of, I take it all to heart and it stresses me out. And so romance is just the hopeful genre. Um, and I love being part of it and I love uh, getting to, to to create that and share it with other people. That's a beautiful answer. So I'm gathering that your angst level is like a five. What's the scale? I one to ten. <laughs> <laughs> Not one to five. One to thirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think five is fair because when my editor read my very first manuscript, those of you who have read uh, Ashley Bartlett, that is, uh, she is my editor, and she said to me, "I think you've misunderstood the difference between conflict and a series of slight." misunderstanding <laughs> oh. um so i i do you have to have angst right there has to be some tension or the, the story gets really boring really fast um and so yeah i think five is the sweet spot. okay um l that just sends me right to you because you you um what's your favorite thing about writing a romance and what's your angst level I'm just adding that on arbitrarily. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, mine is pretty up there. I, I tend to put my characters through a little bit of hell, which, you know, is another reason why I absolutely need a happy ending uh, to make it all worthwhile. What was your question again? I have no idea. Um, I think it was, <laughs> why do you write romance? About writing oh, 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 why do I write romance? Um, Torturing so, <laughs> Um, number one, because I, I absolutely love it, but it gives me, um, it gives me great joy to think that, that people out there are getting what I didn't have when I was, when I was young. Um, I didn't know it even existed. And so to give that to younger folks, um, I love the idea of that. And, um, yeah, it's just fantastic living in these. It's kind of like being an actor in that I get to live in these other people for a little while. And um, that's that's really fun for me. Great answer. CJ, so you write a bunch of different kinds of books. So I do. Do you, what's your favorite genre? And then what what's your favorite thing about writing romance? Uh, so to be honest, I think my favorite genre to write is sci-fi because I can make it up. That's the great thing about sci-fi. It, it can all be fake. And so for that reason, it's a little easier to just pull from your imagination. Um, but I do, I really enjoyed writing Just One Taste because it, it pushed me, it challenged me to, like I had some scenes in there where there was some like a break in at the diner and I was like, I have to take that out. It's too to action. I had like five action sequences in it. <laughs> before I sent it to my editor, I actually was like, no, 
let's take those out. <laughs> it's not appropriate for like a nice, fun romance about food. So I, um, I think it really, uh, it, it pushed me to see characters and explore characters in a different way. And I loved that. You had to take out the spaceship lands at the diner scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that had to go. So <laughs> interestingly enough, though, there was a spaceship in Trinity Bellwood's true story. It was fake, but for a Nuit Blanche, but... Google that. Um, but I, I think you make a really good point when you're just writing the contemporary romance without the suspense or anything else when it's stripped down like that. It's really challenging and you really have to do some great character development because that's... Yeah, you have to rely about. on characters. And I think that's important too. And I think other genres should have that character strength. So it's a great way to just build as a writer. Good point. Fiona, Riley, what's your favorite thing about writing romance? What's your angst level? Um, I think my angst level kind of runs between like five and seven or eight. I don't know if I get up as high as Elle. Sometimes Elle puts their people in some crazy crap. Um, <laughs> Gunfights and stuff. Um, you know, I think, I think I would say Bet Against Me, uh, the newest book, probably had a pretty significantly high angst level and that there was a major pl one person's perceptive betrayal, pretty significant. Um, but I think the reason I write romance and the reason um, that I enjoy writing it is sort of something that Elle touched upon. It's about seeing um, our stories told and seeing them told in a, in a very varied way. Um, when I was growing up, if you heard me talk about this before, my mother was in this sort of, um, you know, back alley romance club with all these other moms. And we used to go to all um, visit all my friends and the we would always have a, bo a bag of books in our car. And it was like dollar store trash, like Fabio romances. And we would be so embarrassed and like shuffling these bags in between our houses. And my mother would read one or two a day. Like she would just rip through them. And I used to make fun of her incessantly. And then all of a sudden I started writing lesbian romance. So, um, <laughs> I guess I'm a hypocrite, but um, I just, I love the idea that we have these, these, I want people to read stories of happy ever afters. And I want people to read stories of queer people finding success and finding happiness and not always ending in some dramatic artsy jump off a building kind of situation. Like I really do want to have this be more normal. I have two little girls and I'm, you know, raising a family and I want them to be confident in their bodies and I want them to love themselves and I want them to find people that compliment them in a way that makes them better people compliment with an e not with an i i really want them to find that and i think that that's important for us to put out there so you know i tend to write strong characters and opinionated characters and, and people who are confident in what they want and that take what they want and just take up space and i think that that's what i want to see out there i want my people and my characters to take up space in this world and for other people to see that and know that that's you know, a chance for them to have, an option for them that there's other things out there. So I think you need that escapism. And I think that I'm happy to be involved in that. I think, like Elle said, I think if I had more queer love stories growing up, then I probably would have started dating women a lot sooner. But... <laughs> Bird. <laughs> so I'm just trying to help you get laid is what's really going on. So, so you're welcome. Well, that was a really beautiful message. We're rounding out our time now, so I'm just going to take a minute to go around the room. I'd like you to tell, remind everyone what book is currently out or about to come out and what you're working on next. And you have 10 seconds. And Elle, <laughs> I'm going to Well, on. okay. I'm just wondering, is CJ drinking the Long Island iced tea? That's what it looks like. It's called uh, Ryan Tap That, actually, from People's Pint. It's really good. Oh, there you go. Okay. Probably something we can't get here, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so, what am I supposed to do now? What? It's my book? <laughs> Love your book. And what do you got? What are you working on next? Okay. Holiday Treatment, out November 1st. Fun holiday rom-com. And um, what am I working on right now? I just sent in um, one that... that Goes, kind of goes back to the world of casting Lacey, Hollywood. Um, and so that one will be out, I believe, in May. And then uh, I'm working on another one now, and I can't think of, of what it is because I'm brain dead. So. It's a very good book. And <laughs> <laughs> so good. I forgot all about it. <laughs> Aurora, tell us what you – plug your book and tell us what's coming up next. <laughs> 
And, and she's silent. She's muted. <laughs> muted. Twice shy. Sorry, I muted myself because Oliver was barking. Uh, Twice shy is out now. Um, it features <laughs> Baker, um, who falls for the architect she hires to renovate her bakery, but not before she has a very ill-advised affair with her ex-wife. Um, I am doing edits for my, my spring release, which is a second chance romance, high school sweethearts that get back together, set in Louisiana, um, which is kind of fun. And I'm actually just starting to work on two, I'm doing with Jamie Clevenger, um, writing two books together uh, that are shared world and actually take place concurrently, which I've never done before um, and is proving to be really interesting. <laughs> And she writes about cuffing, so look that up. Okay, CJ, <laughs> plug your book and tell us what's coming out next. So, uh, Just One Taste, it came out September. Uh, uh, it's If you're a foodie, then you'll like this. It's about a diner and baking, so. Um, and my next book, we'll see, I put a proposal in for, I think, fall of next year. It's. It's a soft sci-fi. It's about time travel and an apocalypse. And I actually had originally written it as a pandemic that destroys Earth, but then I had to change that because then we hit a pandemic. And so I rewrote it, and now it's different. It's soft. <laughs> I love this. I cannot wait for that book. Um, it's a soft sci-fi. <laughs> Fiona, round us out. <laughs> um, I was looking, my book is over there, I can't reach it, but I just released Bet Against Me, which is the start of a series, the High Stakes Romance series. Um, I just completed this past Monday the sequel, which is called uh, Be uh, Bet the Farm, and that will be coming out in the spring. It's a continuation of the first book, The Same World, and you'll see a third book in the series called Beginner's Bet. That'll be out in the fall, and it's going to carry all the characters from the first book all the way through the third. And very shortly, I have a Christmas novella coming out with uh, Georgia Beers and Maggie Cummings called All I Want for Christmas. And my story is called The Christmas Miracle. And that will be at your doorstep in about a month. So it's a cute little short. And everything that's featured in there is also featured in the Bet series. So you'll see those people again. Cannot wait. I'm looking forward to all these um, books. And I'm really um, excited about our audience. Thanks y'all for participating so vibrantly. And I hope you all stay tuned. Aurora Ray is going to be chatting with Angie Williams um, about various things and a project, I think, maybe. You know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so go buy Boy the life. book. Thanks, y'all. Look forward to a great weekend with all of you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.